Welcome back guys, Automotive Inquiries here. Today I am showing you guys what I traded the Silverado 2500 HD off for. I've had this bad boy for about a month and long story short of it is most dealers around here were marking their uh, Super Duties up because they're super hard to come by, up by tens of fifteens of thousands. Uh, it just lucked out that um, while I was down selling my F-150 back to a Ford dealership here in the uh, metro area, uh, I was doing some searching and stuff because I wanted to move on from the Chevy and uh, found this guy, uh, just a stock photo of it up in Wyoming and uh, called the dealer and this was a special order from a guy that uh, once it finally came in financing couldn't get through so they had to uh, make it available and literally I was up there the next day and I bought this so they uh, even actually gave me a small discount on it um, from MSRP which if you pay MSRP for a vehicle that's never good but right now that's kind of the market um, but I actually got a discount on this guy so this is a 22 um, rapid red F350 6.7 power stroke um, with the Lariat Plus package, meaning it got the 18 inch chrome wheels, uh, the Super Duty steps, um, some of the extra chrome little here and there, and then it does have the full LED package. So, before we get started, a couple things I want to clear up on this video that are, you know, maybe it's news to some people, maybe y'all know this, but so if you look down here, a lot of people are like, uh, Ford still uses, you know, manual locking hubs for four wheel drive and everything. No, the system still has auto four-wheel drive, so inside you run into whether you can click it into four-wheel drive, it's in four-wheel drive. It's an automatic hub. If you want to turn it into a locking differential, you would hop out and turn this on. So if you want to, I guess, crawl like a tank, if you will, you can get out and lock that. If you just leave it in auto and shut your four-wheel drive on and off inside the cab, that's basically all you have to do is shift on the fly. If you lock that, you shut off the four-wheel drive, the hub is still engaged, so you need to get out and unlock that so it uh, doesn't, you know, cause extra wear and tear on that system. But that being said, you don't have to get out and move this to engage your four-wheel drive system, period. So that's uh, a lot of people just believe that that's the case, and it's not. Uh, it's kind of a nice feature, I guess, if for some reason you are out rock climbing in an f-350 or trailing or whatnot or you just got in some deep mud i guess that'd be more realistic you know you're a farm guy and you get stuck out somewhere in some deep snow that's kind of what those hubs are for um but very similar to a locker i guess if you will so another misconception is ford and chevy teamed up fears go to make a 10 speed transmission in the light duty or half ton market uh, I had that 10 speed in my F-150. It was a good little transmission. The Chevy transmission for the Duramax, which is the Allison, is not made in conjunction with Ford in any respect. You can actually go to my other Chevy video and there's actually a link in there where a guy at GM is talking near a cutaway of the Allison and he strictly comes out and says that that transmission has nothing to do with the torque shift in the HD truck. So. People all the time say, oh no, Ford and Chevy, that's, that's Ford's got an Allison in it. It does not. However, I will tell you this one, the torque shift in this truck is is uh, excellent. And now that the 6.7 and the torque shift have been out for several years, uh, Ford's got it together now. So that's to kind of clear it up. So as we walk around this, again, I got the uh, full LED light package, which these are the daytime running lights in LED. They look great. The headlights are automatic, uh, high beams and everything, super great. Love that feature. Um, LED fog lamps, people don't like that uh, snow guard down there or the little thing that's for aerodynamics fuel economy, people call it the snow plow. You know, to be honest with you, I could care less. It's it's not that attractive, but with these wider tires for the FX4 and stuff, it actually doesn't look bad. And if people are like, well, it's just gonna get torn off. Well, we drive F450s in construction sites all day and we've yet to tear one off. Uh, so people have hit some stuff, but it still didn't tear it off. So they're, they're pretty tough. Um, I could pop the hood and show you what my wife would say. Yep, there's a motor. But the 6.7 power stroke has a little bit more room in this year versus my 13 that did. Um, and then your your power ratings are 475. All right, sorry about that. I'm back. I had to get a little drink of water and clear my throat. Anyway, this uh, this truck's got the 475 horsepower and 1,050 pounds of torque, so it's 
it's either the, the biggest now or was biggest just a minute ago or whatnot. So again, like I said in my other videos, 12 valve Cummins, you know, uh, the mid 90s version, I would be just as happy with. They're plenty powerful and, uh, you know, reliability is great, fuel economy is great. So I really don't have an issue with that. Uh, but it's neat to say that you got all this horsepower and stuff like that, but it's overkill, okay? Um, but uh, we cruise around here. Again, being a special order, I didn't even know really or care that it had some of the swag in it. Uh, my main goal was to try and get an F350, so I had the bigger leaf pack and then the overload springs. I'll probably still put Timbrens on here just in case, but I don't ever anticipate uh, putting that much on there. The other thing I would always recommend is wheel wall liners. This is this is now an option. Um, a few years ago, it seemed like it was a standard thing. It's not, um, so that's nice. Uh, can appreciate how Ford put that there with the def. I always put a backflip on all my trucks. I love this brand. No, they're not endorsing me. No, they don't give me anything. Uh, they get a lot of my money though, um, but well worth it. Turns the bed into a lockable storage. Um, so it's really awesome. I did want uh, the puck system, which this one had. So again, the way this guy built this truck is definitely how I do it. So well done on his behalf. I don't know who he is, but I, uh, I'm definitely enjoying the truck that he had built. Um, everything back here, plenty of tie downs, super tough bed, uh, puck system. Again, if you're gonna tow bumper tow and you think you might ever go to a gooseneck or whatever, it just makes the, the truck itself um, more capable and easier to transform into whatever you want to. So even though that's a Patriot hitch, you can buy this um, adapter system, which will work in the Chevy and the Ford. You just gotta change the pattern around of the bolting and it just goes right into the puck system. So uh, I got the old man step, which I can appreciate. All the truck manufacturers have their own version of something like that. I really enjoyed the Chevy one. There was no movement to it, no extra weight. Tailgate was super light. This one's a little bit heavier because of that step, but that's an option. You don't have to get that. So um, all the LED lights, I really enjoy the brightness of those, um, the sonar and everything. FX4 package gives you the off-road skid plates and whatnot. Um, we got these big mirrors. They do uh, power extend uh, in this truck. That is not a standard option. You'd have to get out and pull those out. Uh, I would have to say that the Chevy new mirrors aren't as nice looking aesthetically, but they are bigger um, and more useful. Um, and I don't need, didn't even need to flip them out. These, I extend the four inches to pull uh, my fifth wheel and I really didn't notice much difference, but plenty of area to view. So that's not a knock on it, it just is. Um, Another thing I'd always recommend is if you can get some cameras put in it, especially cargo cameras, this one has it. Uh, that's a great feature. Got the Ford keypad in there. And then, so this one's got Dune interior, or sorry, Baja. Dune is a different uh, manufacturer. So Baja, best way to explain it, um, butterscotch. It's not baby crap yellow, but there's no way for me to with the contrast pitch of everybody's screens, it's gonna look different, but if you went in and found like a, a piece of like snicker bark, you know, butterscotch or something like that, the nougat, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, did put Husky liners in here because the Ford full floor liners were on back order, and I like Husky liners because they're grippy. They're just as uh, affordable as the Ford ones, just as good. The Ford stock ones, the carbon ones, hardly covered anything. So it's all about covering your investment. So you can go to Husky Liner's website and check those out. These are exact contours, so they're pretty grippy. Uh, and they just load right in here. So come up here, got all the normal stuff on this bad boy. And uh, you can train the keys to these numbers right here and to each driver. And then lots of little door pockets. I, I love the door storage in this compared to the Chevy. That was nice. All right, so climb in here. So this 12 inch screen, I'm not, I can't turn on the truck because it's gonna zap my phone in and shut the recording off. I don't wanna do that. But the 12 inch screen's just like in my F-150 and frankly, I love that feature about this. And um, it, it's it's great. So if you, you like to um, have 
you know, a system that's complicated but has lots of features and stuff like that because you can learn it over time, then I would suggest, you know, any of the other systems. But if you're like me and you just, you like having the ability but have it be simpler, the Ford is phenomenal when it comes to that. So let's see if I can actually fire this bad boy up. So hopefully it doesn't shut the recording off. But nonetheless, it's hotter than a biscuit in here, so we're going to turn that on. So um, another thing I can appreciate the over, say, the Chevys and stuff like that. Chevy right now, chip shortage. They're having a hard time. Um, you know, they'll, they'll build a truck with, say, cooled seats, but that won't work. And then the heat of steering wheel, and that won't work and all this stuff. Ford took out the crap that nobody really wants anyway, like autom automatic stop and start. They give you a credit for that. Uh, but all my features work in this truck, which I really appreciate. So, again, we come in here trying to give you the best shots of the interior. It's actually kind of a really cool interior. It breaks it up from all the black. I've, I've had enough black interiors that it was it was like, okay, I'll try this. And, and I've actually enjoyed it. The uh, ceiling is more of like of a peanut butter color. Um, so, I actually really enjoy it. So upfitter switches, the guy ordered that with these. I'll, I'll probably never use these, um, but I guess it's neat to have them if you need it. Uh, the truck itself has plenty of power outlets and stuff, so you wouldn't need to wire one in or anything. I guess if you had a plow or something effect, you need those you know, strobe lights, you could use that. Um, but love the 12 inch screen. You can easily just swipe it, you know, and I just, the voice recognition uh, recognizes the way I talk and stuff like that. You know, the Subaru, the Jeep, other ones just didn't work very well. So it does have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with the 12 inch screen, um, but very great, super easy intuitive system. You can come over here and hit the voice activated and tell it what temperature to set it. It's, it's really a great system. It's a great screen. You can see it great at night, it automatically changes. The navigation is phenomenal. Um, like I said, in my F-150, it has all kinds of features when you have a route set in and you're coming up, you can hit the next exit and it tells you, you know, how to, you can just literally click it with one finger and it'll tell you the telephone numbers, call it, you know, gas prices, whatever. It's awesome. So up here, we got the uh, engine brake, you know, your traction control off, you know, your downhill descent, and then it has the uh, cargo management camera, which again, I love. Uh, a little storage up here. It's got a B&O sound system in it, which is really good. Um, but the stock systems in our XLs at work are actually really good too, so I don't really don't have a problem with that. Uh, love this with the rapid heater in it. You don't really have to wait to start it. The truck will do what it needs to do. The Rams, I always like to push it twice and let the glow, you know, the grid heater warm that up. It didn't have glow plugs. This one has glow plugs. So does the Duramax. So uh, plenty of features there. Um, when it comes to everything up here, it does have a wireless charger down here, which I didn't even know it had. It's neat that it has it and it does charge through my OtterBox, my S22 Ultra. So even though that pad's not big enough, I can set it in there and it charge it, which is pretty cool. Um, and then another feature I liked right here is uh, th these cup holders are a little bit small for Gatorade. You can slide it over and it'll hold a big coffee cup or whatever. It's, I, I just like the thought of it, you know, that's an extra thought process to it. Um, in here, big storage, but without CDs anymore, really don't have enough crap to fill it. Um, but, uh, and then both these glove boxes are lit in this version. I don't know if, if XLT or lower will lower that, but having that is pretty cool. Uh, but they don't felt line them. I buy some felt off of the Amazon and I felt line everything. So it just lowers the rattling ability, everything. I also felt line these edges right here where this goes across and felt line this just takes the rattles out so if you buy a new vehicle and you're like oh man something's now rattling in this thing check the shit you put in it because nine out of ten times it's probably something we put in it um versus the manufacturer the seat belt sometimes can get flipped a little bit and those might rattle but other than that it's probably not the vehicle maybe at a hundred thousand miles but probably not um got the cooled seats the auto and everything like that it does have a heated steering wheel uh, which i'll tell you guys uh there's no button there's no physical button anywhere for your heated steering, which in most cars it is. So to find that bad boy on your screen, you're just going to go into here and it's right there. You just click these arrows up and do that. If you have a smaller version of that and you think you have a heated steering wheel, um, look in your vehicle settings and features, uh, but you're probably going to need to get into a Lariat before you get the heated steering wheel. But there's the button right there. 
you'll also see the little emblem up here actuating it and then if you went into your actual climate features like right here and you hit that you'll also have it right there so you can see it's redundant but you don't have to pull up this big screen to change that you can just leave that and then click these right here so it does have all that heated steering wheel you gotta love it and then one thing I love too about the Ford is when I put this thing in gear it tells me that I'm in these gears and then the little amber one at the bottom is one but as I go uh, up it'll change its gear settings as so and I like that but then if I was going to go if I want to just manually limit I can do that I don't have to pull it down into manual if I pulled it down into manual then you can see how you have to toggle so me personally I like that because this is all I need to do while I'm towing to gear down that mixed with the exhaust brake either uh, in full or auto um, or engine brake whatever you want to call this thing it, the concept is very similar to a Jake brake in a semi but nonetheless I like that how you can see that now when you're in reverse obviously that's not going to show up because you only have one reverse gear but I do like that because then you can go right here I also like versus the other competitors you know how it has these drive modes um, I drive it eco all the time, um, but there's a slippery which will almost automatically engage the four wheel drive for you. Um, your normal mode, which gives you basically everything the tow haul, but I, I like driving an eco and I like how this truck remembers it. My F 150, yet it asks you every time if you want to return it. This one will ask you once in a while if you haven't started it in, say, the last hour, it'll ask you if you want to stay in it. So, fuel economy. Um, with this tank over the last eight hours and two almost 300 miles i'm getting about 18 miles a gallon now most of that's been city about 90 of it was highway but one thing i can do is i, I reset these uh usually keep the trip one on the one i reset all the time and trip two i leave until i get rid of the vehicle so over 60 hours and 1700 miles I'm averaging almost 16 miles a gallon. Now I did check and the fuel meter is within uh, two tenths of correct math versus the computer. So it's not really lying. Back in the old days, you know, people would be like, oh, my V10 gets 18 miles a gallon. Yeah, I'd check that because probably not, but um, it is accurate. So I would say 60 miles a gallon out of a truck that's driven mostly in the city and towing, this was towing also. I've been towing with this. 16 miles a gallon average now the best i've ever got this and people can say i'm lying whatever but it's 23 miles a gallon i can't add the still picture to it to this video um, but i do have a picture of over 180 miles where i got 23 miles a gallon i managed the eco i wasn't towing and i i just did to the speed limit 75 miles per hour that was it and I just let the truck do itself. So I really appreciate that fuel economy because it's very consistent in this truck. I love it. Um, I do only run come and go diesel. Uh, come and go adds all the uh, 911 power service stuff in their diesel tanks. Every time they drop fuel, they put that in there. So helps keep them, uh, injectors lubricated and fuel economy helps all of that stuff. So I'm not gonna bore you with all of this in this video, but I mean, this truck has some really cool towing um set up stuff where you can go in and check your trailer lights if it's connected um you know do blind spot and everything I, I really enjoy a lot of the aspects of this truck and the way it's set up is just really good um and i think you get a lot of that when you step up to the lariat package however you can always get more and you can get less but overall the basics of the truck the power the motor the transmission everything like that it's really great um, and I would definitely recommend the uh, F-350 in that respect. So now let's check out the back seat. All right, back in a flash. So I'm 6'2". Um, Super Duty's always been notorious for crazy great leg room. My F-150 was the same. I mean, you know, probably a seven foot tall human could sit back here. I mean, honestly, there's plenty of room. Um, Chevy didn't even have any power ports, which this is overkill, obviously, but I would have been happy with this in that custom i'd have been happy with a usb a usb c anything but to have all of these in here it covers the kids it covers everything it's great so well done on that the vents on this are also bigger and they're like my ram the chevys they're like an inch they're tiny and they're basically at your feet so they're not gonna blow up in your face but we'll give it to chevy for at least putting vents in the back of their trucks finally um that had a bench sheet the older trucks some of them had them in the console but not all um, so and this does have heated seats in the back which is cool uh, lots of cup holders back here door everything like that got plenty of that 
I do appreciate this. This is a three-step light, so you can click it down incrementally. So if the kids want it on while you're driving and you, that's something that bothers you, I could care less, but you can actually tone the light down. Um, it does have some ambient light. You can kind of see the little LED flashing right there. That lights up at night. I've always been a huge fan of that um, because it means less uh, dome light usage. Again, Husky liners. Um, those wrapped all the way up to here, which again, my vehicles are an investment, so if you don't care about your carpet, then just run it to the cheapo ones and uh, the cheap carpet ones that come with it. They will come with that, and uh, you know, you can live life that way. This does have a, a storage bin here that I took down because I shoved my uh, sun visor underneath the seat versus storage because this actually has another storage bin behind it, which holds all my crap. So I don't really need this, but it's cool to have that because this is big enough you could put a small rifle, small shotgun if you're out hunting in there like that. Uh, put that up there, it is Kevlar, so somebody would have to cut it with like a sawzall. Um, and then if you put the seat down like this with that storage up, you can actually lock it with the key and the key fob and it secures whatever's underneath the seat. So, Or if you guys go Christmas shop and you wanna put your stuff in there uh, because you don't have a tonneau um, to secure that. Again, criminals are Opportunist, they out of sight, out of mind, so you can put it in this cool lockable storage, put it in your truck with a, with a tonneau on it. But it is neat just to have that feature. Never really had most of the time. If it has storage, people can still access it pretty easy, so that's fine. Um, some cup holders got a power rear slider, which I never use, but it's neat to have, I guess. Again, it's those aren't prerequisites for me. I would like to have had some charging ports. Um, I do like tilt and telescoping uh, steering wheels, that's neat. Um, but being a Lariat, this has beyond more than what the Custom had. I mean, they're two different packaging styles. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, the Ford uh, definitely comes with more, even in, a, in an XL, comes with more than the Chevy Custom. But price point-wise, Ford's going to be more. So, stand by one second. So now that we're back in the front seat, um, I do like the easy access. Um, seat and steering wheel gets out of your way the system you can actually shut this off in the super duty so it doesn't ask you to check your back seat i just leave it on it doesn't bother me but it will keep dinging for a little bit after you get out of the car um so yeah let's just hop out and uh, get the final impressions all right guys so as i wrap this up having owned the ram having owned the chevy and having owned this now this iteration of the Ford Power Stroke is really good. Um, there's a lot of other ones. I've had six liters, you know, seven threes. I had the first generation of this, which did not work out well. <coughs> the six four, which is out there, actually has a short run, but it actually has the, the least amount of reported problems, but there were just as many problems with it. And some people will bang on the Duramax because it has issues with the, the injector pumps and stuff like that. As of right now, the LP5 Duramax doesn't have a lot of reported issues. I, you know, it all the emissions crap on there is not good for any diesel, but it is what we're stuck with if you live in a, an area where you're required to have emissions. But, you know, when people say, well, I like... I don't like the Ram because it's not as fast. Okay, if you're buying an HD diesel truck for racing, you can make the Ram just as fast as any of these other ones. Um, if you're looking to pull a load fast, then you probably should check yourself at the door because that's not what pulling trailers is all about. Because my Ram would pull a trailer at 80 just as good as this one would pull. Um, the, the, the Chevy probably pull it at 80 just as well. Um, but there's a lot of other things that go into that if you're going up and down the mountains How does it handle grades? How many brake applications do you have? You know the more times you touch the brakes while you're towing uh, That means the trailer if it has brakes is also using its brakes, which those are not built as well as car brakes so there's a lot of aspects that go into heavy-duty trucks and I would recommend the gas version of Ford Super Duty, the 6.2. I'd recommend the Godzilla. Again, we have a lot of Ford gas um, heavy duties at work and um, they're great trucks. Their comfort, the, the equipment they come in, they stop well, they gear down well without having to use brakes. I mean, my V10 just shifting with the uh, manual part on the, uh, the gear limiter, it works just as good as an exhaust brake and slows it down. So um, 
and out of all the trucks you know the ram has a more robust exhaust brake if you will and you know it's a great truck i have no no qualms about it um mine was a 16 but i did rent a uh uh, well, the company rented a new Hemi-powered HD truck, and the thing seized up with 40,000 miles on it. Now, granted, who knows how well that car was taken care of, but I checked the oil before I drove it, and drove it up Eisenhower, you know, the gauntlet, if you will, pulling a small generator. It died and left me on the side of the road, and that's the second Ram I've had uh, was driving that left me high and dry. I've had Ford's leave me high and dry. I've had yet to have a Chevy leave me high and dry, but... I think if I would have driven that one for much longer, I'd have been worried about the brakes. But uh, I think you really got to think about what's what you're looking for in a truck. If you're just looking for something you're going to cruise in and you just want power and drive fast and you don't really care about fuel economy, then I'd say get the Duramax uh, because that is a fast, ripping pickup. I mean, it's like a race car. This truck has more power and more torque, and it doesn't feel as fast as that Duramax. But when it comes to stopping that truck also didn't feel like you know it would stop as well either and there goes my old boy right there there's there's my there's my ram rolling tough um and that was a great truck too so i mean it just really comes down to drive them all find out which price point you want to be in check the things that really matter when you get an hd truck how does it stop how does it slow down itself well imagine that magnified pulling a load that say weighs half of what the trailer weight is and then think if you're going to max it out potentially so um then think about you know potentially resale you know uh, if you buy a gas over a diesel diesel is always going to resale better period at six dollars a gallon versus four four bucks a gallon diesel is always going to resell there's a lot of you know red-blooded american people that just love diesel trucks that's always going to be the uh, a niche that's not going to go away until they outsource or sorry outmode diesel then we'll deal with it but um but yeah i i would say right now having owned all three having driven all three used all three that if you're looking for good fuel economy excellent power good comfort good tech um you can't go wrong with the super duty um, and it doesn't matter what trim level you're at because you can build one and add things to an XL or an, or an STX or even an XLT to make it a very nice truck if you don't care about leather and stuff like that and cooled seats. Um, so if I was going to have all three lined up right now and they were all the same price and all equipped the exact same, I would pick the Ford. Um, and the reason is because I've towed with it a lot so far in the 1700 miles and the fuel economy, the comfort, the braking, the, the power, it's phenomenal compared to everything else that's out there. The transmission is so smooth uh, compared to the ASIN. The ASIN is a clunker. You know, I loved, I loved it because it's heavy duty, but man, it was smashing gears. It felt like somebody didn't know how to drive a stick shift was switching gears for me at that automatic. But uh, nonetheless, hopefully this gave you some information. It gave you my honest insight. And again, everything that I show you guys on this channel, I own. I spent my hard-earned you know money on buying these things and uh you know i take the hit or or the win when it comes to if i bought the thing i'm not happy with like chevy i wasn't happy with it you know and i had to get rid of it because i didn't want to tow the thing it was downright scary but uh you know hopefully this will give you just a little bit more insight because i'm not one of the guys that gets a dealership to loan me cars because i say their name you know uh in, in the video and go check them out for car deals nobody sponsors me i got this truck from ken garf they gave me a decent deal and i'll give them some props for that but i gave them my money they didn't give me no money the backflip on there i love them they're great i've had five or six on different trucks i've never worn one out never destroyed one that ram drove by still has my original g2 on it they don't give me money i gave them my harder money i'm hoping to give you guys just a little insight a little bit of idea and a little bit of just common sense things to look at um you know in in an actual owner's review of what i think of this you know so till we meet again guys uh, drive safe out there and take care